going to remove the air cylinder on here on the 200 first going to remove the barrel and the front stock so it'll be easier to get to it to unscrew it because it's quite tight uh, to get the barrel off you just need to uh, release the allen screws there there and at the front this is adjustable so the scope can fit across uh, you can see the, the little doom pulls in the barrel depending on your scope you can adjust that that's it so that's the barrel off there's a little screw underneath holding the stock on there's only one on this one this is a mark one on the mark two and the mark three they've got another fitting further up the stock just there about where my uh, my stud is so that's undone there's a little plastic sleeve on that so that is off that's short very tight I might have to use a special tool to unscrew it uh, this is from uh, XTX here we specialise in uh, tuning up BSAs and different rifles and this is a little tool they made that I've bought it's about £7 and it lets you get the uh, the air tube apart. Mm. That collar goes over there. I don't think it's going to be long enough. I don't think it is. I'll come back to that. Okay, as you can see, I've fitted the special uh, tool on the other end. I've used my stilts on it just to loosen it off and uh, it's now coming undone now look. so that's done its job so my intention is to fit uh, an Arteros regulator which goes in the uh, air cylinder and also a quick fill adapter with a gauge on the end uh, I found out that these are pretty tight to get undone on the first go uh, but once you've uh, undone them they're easier to come off so we'll see how that goes and the way it works on here you've got the two holes there and there the same at the bottom end slightly different sizes the one at the bottom is just thicker the one at the top it's a thinner pin uh, and uh, XTX engineering who made this special tool and it's got the four holes in it and you just put it put it on the end find the big hole put one in there find it that's one in and one in this end and I would imagine I might need a vice then you get your stilts and, and just undo it but uh, I'll show you the progress on that one as I go along right as you can see I managed to get the uh, the air tube off and find it I can't just can't get the ends off of this it's just too tight so I need a vise to put it in so I'll come to back to that later what I'm going to do now is uh, just lubricate my new bolt I've put in uh, the other one uh, the nut sheared off on it so I've had to replace the bolt 
So now I'll we'll take the stock off and just lube up the bolt. Then you take the stock screw off at the side. And as you can see on the early Mark 1, just there, we've got a little uh, nut and in the middle of that nut is an Allen key grub screw. And on the early editions, you was able to adjust the the power on these uh, all the way in to lower the power uh, down to around six foot pounds and bring it out, and it will go to like sixteen foot pounds all the way out if you've got a firearm permit. The other way of uh, increasing the power is to increase the strength of the armor spring, uh, and also if you're going to do that, if you're going to get a firearm permit on these is uh, the transfer port hole needs boring out more to get more air going through it but as I'm just using a 12 foot pound version all I need to do is tune it up to around 11 and a half foot pounds uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to fit uh, one of these in it it's in uh, Altero uh, cost around £63. Uh, basically, all you do take the uh, the valve end off, uh, you measure the, the length of the screw in there, and it should be 10 millimeters from what they're saying, and you screw this on, and that regulates it, and then obviously then you want to get to the foot poundage so if it's not if it's not on the right foot pounds i can adjust the uh the actual transfer port uh screw there and also the tension on the trigger spring to bring it up to where i want it to be uh, also from the same place i've got an actual quick a new quick fill and they come with all the seals and everything there's a quick fill uh, and you, you also get a probe with that as well a lot smaller than the one that you get with the rifle so that just plugs into that really good so that that's what my intention is to modify it put the new quick fill on it and the new manometer Carrying on to what I'm doing, the next thing I've got to do, if you look down there, there's a screw that's dead hard to get at. So I made a little tool, it's cost me a pound from Tesco. Uh, it's a utility key, a four, four way utility key. I've cut one of the uh, utility keys off. I've cut about five millimeter of the tube off and the ones with the lug sticking out have uh, ground those down so what they do then they'll actually fit the actual uh, nut inside and find it so basically it takes several turns to do it it's a bit dark in here but you can you can what you can also do if you've got a big screwdriver you can cut the center out of it there and it will do the same job as that i thought i'd just make this small one up so i can keep it in my bag it's all bag So if you cut the bolt back, it makes it easier to come out. So there's the, the little nut. You can see it's got two slots in it. Uh, and basically the reason you have to cut this, you have to make a tool for it, is because when it's on, the actual uh, bolt stands proud. 
So you've got to make sure you've got something to go over it like that. It locks straight in. Look. That's that's a good tip for a quid. Save your fortune there. Right, what happened on this, on the firing mechanism, as you can see there's a bolt. This nut here, it sheared off, probably for the first time in 20 years or whenever the rifle were built. So uh, I couldn't get the nut out, so I had to replace this. It cost about £30 for the whole thing from uh, John Nibs. So what I'll do now, I'll just grease it up down there, so it makes the cocking better. That's better, looks better already. Right. So that is uh, basically gun grease, that one. Stops metal on metal, basically. Alright, so on my next video, once I've released the uh, both the inlet valve end and the uh, main valve and I'll uh, show you putting in the uh, the regulator the uh, new quick fill manometer I hope you've learnt a bit about the workings of one of these and here I'm just 200 mark one Right, I'm working back on the uh, fitting in my uh, Alteros regulator and uh, quick fill and uh, manometer reading gauge. It took me ages to get the actual uh, air tube off. It's so tight, it must have been fitted by a machine. Uh, I was trying to aim on uh, just using G clamp, so I just couldn't get enough pressure on it. So I managed to uh, put it on my dad's vice today and uh, get the ends loose. Uh, it's a right bugger to do, but it's done there. The reason I'm changing to this quick fill is it gives, when it's on, it's no longer than that really. And it's better than that sticking out the end. That's the original air arms adapter which is massive compared to the little probe uh, I actually got that from uh, Alteros as well uh, so with that and the regulator it came to around £97 for the two uh, the regulator on its own quick converge is about £63 uh, so what I'll do first I'll put the uh, quick fill on. So you just unscrew the inlet valve. Quite a long thread. As you can see inside. Uh, the uh, regulator and, adapt and the uh, quick fill come with spare uh, O-rings as well. lubricate the o-ring basically just screw the new one on and these don't need to be as tight as what they were on on most of the uh, videos you see on YouTube it's just hand tight it's enough so you don't need it fitted by a machine at like two ton pressure 
at that scent. It's not actually reading bars, it's reading a different measurement. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> basically it goes from 0 to 300. Uh, and each, I think each uh, little dot on there is 100 bar. So these are normally filled at 190 bar. So it's 19 on there. So that's all we need to know really. No more than 200. Uh, now we're doing the the outlet valve regulator end. Never had this off before, and I would imagine it's never been apart because of how tight it was. That on screws. Don't need that anymore. Now what you do need to do on this is measure the depth of the screw in there. I'll just make sure that's the right screw driver here. Yeah. So you can see that on a point in. About 860. That needs to be around 10. So on most of these just tighten it up. You can see the screw in there, I don't know if you can or not. Let's measure the depth of that now. I think I've gone too far with that, hang on. Yeah, that's come out just a bit. Quarter, quarter turn, see what that done. Bit more. Not much to turn actually. That quarter turn. 997, that'll do. So there's a regulator. It's already got the natural O ring on it. Let's put a bit of square around that. tight just enough to fill out a bit and these particular regulators don't need venting that's one reason why I got it, I didn't fancy drilling into the cylinder only because I've not got proper drill for it. So basically that is it now. That's the uh, Air Arms S200 with a new uh, quick fill valve and a new regulator fitted. So the next thing to do will be uh, test it. Uh, another thing you do, need to do when you do this this is the Mark 1 version it was an, an adjustable uh, power screw just going through the top you've got uh, the transfer port where the air comes from the cylinder goes up into the bar and shoots it along there's a little grub screw there and a locking nut the grubs do screw goes into the uh, into the port and basically if that was the port say it off blocks it so it lets less air through the more you bring it out the more it goes through and you get more uh, more power but what they recommend is you you take the grub screw all the way out so it's completely open and all the tuning is then done 
at the actual hammer spring at the back. Now I've already done this, but the same again on, on the Mark 1s, you can uh, get to the hammer screw with a screwdriver. What you're supposed to do on the website, because everything is on YouTube from Altros uh, regulators, you unscrew it to its level with the end of that, and that should do it. Uh, if you want any more power, you basically just screw it in, and all that does, it tightens up the hammer spring. That means you get more power. Uh, so, as soon as I've got it fitted and tested, I will then uh, adjust that screw to make sure I'm up to 11 and a half foot pounds or whatever. Uh, but that is all there is to it, and I say that in an easy way because it's not. Because the hardest thing I've found so far is actually getting the the inlet and outlet valve out of the actual air tube. Uh, you definitely need a vice for it. Uh, it means I've got rid of that now, uh, and that bloody great big thing. But uh, as soon as I've got it uh, up and running, I'll, I'll let you know how it's performing. But it should make the shots more consistent and give you a few more shots. Uh, I mean, this rifle is shooting spot on anyway. It's very accurate the air arms. Uh, but I just, I'd had, I've already had me uh, Webley uh, regulated, and I thought well, I might as well do it on this and uh, do it myself. So I've learnt a lot about the gun really, taking it apart and everything. Uh, another problem I had went wrong with this was uh, the actual bolts screw just there had sheared off uh, and it had snapped off inside the actual uh, bolt probe uh, I tried to get it out it just wasn't coming out drilling it out so I bought a new uh, bolt from John Nibs it cost me about 30 quid and replaced it uh, hopefully in the next couple of days you know I should have some fun with it but uh, thanks for watching, I hope it's been helpful for anybody that's thinking about doing this. Well I'm back again. What I decided to do, uh, I'd, I'd actually fitted the, uh, the regulator and the new quick uh, fill probe. But what I thought I'd do, I'll have to take them out again and I'm going to re-blue the tube. So it did get a couple of scratches on when I was trying to get the the actual uh, valves out. So what I'm going to do now is first off uh, put some degreaser on it to remove any uh, grease or oils that's on it. So I'm using uh, Birchwood Casey uh, cleaner degreaser to start off with and I'll be blowing it up with the G96 gun blue and this one you can put it on it's like a cream basically and you just rub it in and when the uh, when the actual uh, metal goes grey you rinse it off so uh, first off I'll degrease it yeah. Okay, so that's done the degreasing. Right, so we've got to rinse that now with water, but rather than put it under a tap, I'll wet some paper towel and do it that way, and then I'll dry. Okay, so that should get any more of the residue off. Dry it off. If you look at that, it's like a map grey finish at the moment. The tube's empty, I don't know if you can see down there, but it should be like a mirror finish. Shouldn't be any bits down there. Alright, next job is to put the gun blue on. And that goes on just like the degreaser, although this is a gel rather than a liquid. And they are quite corrosive, so just make sure we don't get it on yourself.
So I'll just leave that a bit to go off. I'll come back to it and clean it off. And hopefully it'll be a lot better than it was. All right, as you can see, the uh, it's gone grey now, so it uh, should be ready for wiping off. I've wetted a, a cloth, I'll rub it off. Not a bad finish. I suppose you can uh, go over it a few times, really. The more you do it, the better sheen it'll get. But what are you supposed to do after you've got it off with a damp cloth? You dry it out and then put some uh, silicon oil on it and that helps to stop fingerprints. Dry it off. That's a lot better. It's like a, a greyish colour before. I want to spray it with the uh, Bisley silicon oil. I should give it the sheen it needs. Hold on. Right, the first uh, test fill of the uh, air cylinder should be done with the uh, cylinder off the rifle. By looking at the uh, air gauge on the air tank and on the cylinder, we'll see how close they are. Alright, it did need uh, tightening up a bit at the other end, but I don't think it's leaking anymore. Okay, that's 190 bar. There we go. So 190 bar on the uh, air tank regulator. And see if you can see that. It's reading 190 on the actual air cylinder. So based on that, everything's worked out okay on that. But that's it. What I need to do now is get the rifle back together. Yeah, I just sprayed a little uh, synthetic uh, oil around the uh, between the, the actual uh, air cylinder and the valve, 
there's nothing leaking out of it so I'm happy with that I'll put the rifle back together now right I'm going to put the rifle back together I'm going to start by uh, putting the cylinder back on the breech block on my fingers there. Right, the next thing is the barrel. Making sure that the, uh, the dimples and the barrel marry up to the two grub screws. So just undo them a bit. the barrel attached the spacer so that's the barrel and the air soon the back on Next thing is a stop. There's a plastic sleeve on this one, and the Mark One doesn't have the uh, the extra cylinder and barrel ring at the top. It's just got that. Wrong one here. That's it. A stock screw. So that's the four stock back on. And the last bit. There's the washer and a little nut at the end to put the, the rifle butt on. Gives it a slight angle, pushes up. Also, also another screw that goes in there. Don't over tighten it because it can split the, uh, the stop. So that's that. And the fiddly bit is getting the washer to go over. see down there the washer is just about over it so I'll use this allen key to try and shove it over the top yeah the washer's now gone in the next stage is putting the nut on Watch out for the screws on there. Right, 
and I've got a special key for the rest. The other option is to use a really the small X key and work it around with that. I'll probably I'll try doing that and I'll use the key I've made just to tighten it at the end. One of the awkward parts of the rifle. And that's tightened it up. So that's the rifle back together. <laughs> 